Welcome back everyone. We've got some great subjects coming up in today's conversation. We're talking about what men hope for, what they dream about. We're talking really honestly about what men worry about and what their fears are. Make sure you hang around all the way to the end of today's episode because we're talking about having a clear purpose and understanding your why. The reason that gets you out of bed and keeps you going. You don't want to miss that. I'm so glad you're here. I've had the pleasure of helping people from all walks of life to do better with their mental health, their inner life, to become sustainable. Thanks for being here on the channel today. Let's go to today's episode. What do men hope for? Well, what are some of the things that maybe they don't verbalise, but we know it's in there? Oh, I think I think one of the big things is is I hope I don't screw up. Mm. Mm. Right. <laughs> I think I think there's a bunch of, of guys in society who who are terrified right. of screwing it up and then screw it up, you know, families and divorces and you know, whatever. And then um, beat themselves up because mm. they screwed up. Mm. Yeah, I think it's Yeah. So um, and I think you touched on it right at the beginning of the um, um, the, the session of, of the, the currency of hope. You know that right. that I think um, you know the looking forward to the joy of something is is actually is not really prevalent mm. in society much at the moment. Mm. It's, it's it's more a negative of you know what you were talking about before, which is just work and get it done and achieve and. And it's sort of a negative propulsion rather right. than these reaching forward into the joy. Right. Is that because we have, as a society, we have rebalanced and therefore unbalanced the priority schedule? Yeah. I, I, I think so. I think, I think like, like we're in a peculiar age where there is abundance. Yes. Like, 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 like you, you just said it earlier, you, know, you, you can, in the palm of your hand, you can see. see. Mm. What, what everyone's doing. Mm -hmm. You have a machine that, that is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, I, I read a study, this is years ago now, I read a study of a, of a and they interviewed a group, a group of people who had, had been through a war and, and society broke down and right down to the point where there wasn't enough food to eat, there wasn't enough clothes to wear, like all, all the trappings of mm. society were gone. Mm. And then they... they um, reconnected with these people like 15 years after the war where the society had re-established itself and interviewed them about what they thought about the war and there was the, the horror of the war. But there were quite a few people who reflected back um, a longing for the war mm. and, and it was the fact that all the trappings of society had been removed mm. and and the fundamental things of if you had food you would share it with someone else right and 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 people that connected on a human level right and they weren't striving for jobs or anything because like there were no jobs and there wasn't any food and there wasn't any clothes mm. and and then they re-established the society and the, all these things came back and then there was this longing for this human connection of of you know we're equals, we're mm. people, we're... And, and it really struck me as like, wow. I think we've got something wrong here. Yeah, wow. <laughs> you know? Not that, you know, we're not advocating war or anything like sure. that. And, and, you know, we do live in a safe, stable society that, that has all the trappings. Yes. And yet, was it eight guys a day are killing themselves? Eight guys You know, a the day. kids are depressed and distraught. Yes. And, and you know, and... And this, this hoping and this yearning, this longing for things that actually don't satisfy, mm. don't matter. Yeah, I think you're right. And I, I had not heard that, um, it's not an anecdote, but the, those reflections on case studies from war, mm. it is a fascinating dynamic and mm. phenomenon in the soul of humanity, isn't it? Mm. Which, which probably does give lessons for us. Mm. Uh, and it's a little bit cliche, but... Simple pleasures, life's treasures, they used to say. Mm. Maybe it's never been more true. Mm. Uh, and maybe this is why, you know, in the mental health um, coaching space, we're, we're seeing a renaissance of things, simple things like get sunlight, mm. go for a walk in fresh air, mm. get in nature. Yeah. Uh, things that perhaps through um, the 80s and 90s, 
they were regarded as weak expressions mm. because they weren't stoic enough. But actually, maybe, and, and hopefully, we're, we're waking up again to the fact that, no, they actually were always powerful, mm. but we lost our sights on them. Um, what do you other guys think? Well, what do men hope for? What do they worry about? What do you hope for? What do, what do you worry about? And, um, I hope to be you know, a success in life. Yep. Not just career-wise and you know, providing for your family, but... You mentioned before too, making a difference to people. Yes, making you know, make an impact. Whenever God decides to take me home, my my son and my daughters look to me and go, "Proud of Dad." Yes, you know, you, you know, you touched on not messing it up. Right. I think the other end of it is we want to be successful. Sure. Um, yeah. So the worst fear in my life is you know if. I stuffed it up so much that my wife and my kids would look and go, man, dad really messed that up. Mm. I think that's, uh, and it doesn't help the people in environments that have been broken that's right. or haven't, you know, had the benefit of having a father or a mm. mother. Yes. That, that's a whole other layer mm. in society that makes it really challenging because, that's right. you know, where, where we have church at the moment in Miller, it's just completely broken society. Right. And so, you know, you see the men come in, and I don't—they just hope to survive for tomorrow. Mm. Wow! You know, you can see it, and, it yes. and it's just a cycle that they're going through in life. It's it's generational on mm -hmm. the other side, on yes. the other scale. So I think uh, men hope to be successful. Yes. Not to mess it up. Yep. And make the difference to you know, yeah. those around yeah. us. Yeah, it's interesting what you say there about some guys who their hope is make it to tomorrow. Yeah which shines a lot on the fact that it's a relative question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Depending on your start point. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I guess for me it's, I, I, just, I don't know, I want my life to mean something. Yeah. Right. You know, I don't just want to live this mundane life and then get to the end of my days and go, well, what, what was it all about? Yeah. Yes. So um, I guess I like, I try to live my life in a way that I want, I want to do something yeah. with my life. I want it to mean yep. something and have a purpose. Whatever well, yeah. that may be, yeah. Um, but I don't. I don't want to live in a, a purposeless position yes. of like just trying to get through the day. Yeah. Although some days are like that. Some days you go, oh man, I just can't sure. wait for the afternoon. <laughs> sure. You know. But that's that's life. That's but um, right. but uh, yeah, like generally though, really just wanting to. Yes. There's more to life than what I'm currently doing, mm. or what I'm currently totally. where I'm currently at. Again, I think to me, I think that's hardwired into manhood. Mm. We, we could easily say it's hardwired into humanity, and it is. Mm. Uh, we're shining more of a light on the fact that it's hardwired into manhood. This needing to have a sense of purpose mm. and a sense of meaning. Yeah. Uh, I talk to guys a lot, and a lot of the things that I'm writing and recording and so forth right now are, are oriented around that idea of understanding your why is yeah. the way that I phrase it, mm. which is, you know, what, what is the thing that gets me out of bed? Mm. Yeah. Okay, you can have your goals, you can have your things on your financial chat, and there's nothing wrong with those things. Mm. But the real priority is what, what is your, who is your why? Yeah. You know, why are you, why are you putting up with all the struggle? What, who is the reason on the end of that? I think mm. a lot of guys are, they've lost that um, circumstantially or... They've lost their grip on that because their their sight has been distracted yeah. to other things, and they've got mm. to come back full circle to that stuff. Uh, I know for me personally, I, I do get into that space. I, I'm, you know, in some of the old language, I'm, I'm regarded as a choleric personality, which you you know, a, a type one personality, mm. supposedly very driven, um, and to some extent, I am. Um, but I think I've been, I think I've learned contextually mm. and environmentally to be a driven person. Mm. I, I had a bizarre and eye-opening experience about six months ago when I, I was watching my own son who's 10 and I was just observing his nature and his, uh, in, his likes and dislikes and his wiring and all the rest of it. And I, before I had the chance to think about it and filter it, it came out of my mouth and I said to my wife, I think I used to be more like him as a boy. Mm -hmm. And I heard myself say it. 
and then I shoved it down into a dark corner because I thought, I haven't got time to deal with that today. <laughs> but what I was saying was I've learned to become, what I was admitting to was I've learned to become a driven person and I've mm. learned by my environment to push harder than I probably should have for purpose and meaning and all these things when I think, as I try to reflect back on it, I think I was, as a 8, 9, 10, 11-year-old, more of a creative than I want to admit Mm. in my middle years yeah. because I'm watching my own son now and I'm marvelling at his, first of all, his grip on language and his love of animals and nature and creating and making. Mm. And we used to look at him and go, who's this kid? Where did he come from? <laughs> but actually what I was observing was the environmental shift in myself mm. as I've pushed into all the stuff we've talked about tonight. Uh, and so I think... Guys trying to come back to distilling it to simple stuff matters. Mm. Having a simple why mm. uh, and trying not to get caught up in all the comparison thing that we've talked about and um, all of those societal pressures is a big deal. I hope that part of the conversation was helpful for you today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, why don't you go ahead and do that? And in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. What do you think men are hopeful for? What do you think they're worried about? In general, as a middle-aged man, in a changing society, why don't you drop that in the comments below? In our next episode, which you don't want to miss out on, we are talking about the super important subject of women and masculinity. The relationship there, how that's changing. What are we supposed to expect as masculine men in how we relate to the women in our life? You don't want to miss that episode, and I'd love to see you in that one. Be there, whatever you do.